This small device is in charge when it comes to keeping your turbo and engine working in harmony. Controlling engine exhaust flow to the turbine to regulate your boost pressure sounds easy, but there's more going on here than meets the eye. Before we get into the deep end about types and springs, let's take a refresher on what exactly a wastegate is and its role in your turbo system. We know that your engine's turbocharger is powered by the exhaust gas flowing through the turbine housing and pushing on the turbine blades. The more you push them, the more boost you make. Unfortunately, we just can't send all of the boost all of the time. We need a way to meter the amount of gas passing over those turbine blades, keeping your engine and your turbo happy. That's where this device comes in. The wastegate is placed between the exhaust side of the engine and the turbine inlet, and is used to create a controlled leak of gas bypassing the turbo, essentially wasting that energy. So when the pressure being applied onto the bottom of the diaphragm and valve overcomes the pressure working on top of the valve, which can be a combination of air pressure and spring pressure, the wastegate will open and it'll bypass a portion of exhaust gas from the turbine. The more this valve opens, more exhaust is bypassed and therefore less boost you make. There are two main types of wastegates, internal and external wastegates. This simply refers to the placement of the wastegate. Internal means the wastegate is located inside the turbine housing and external means it's on the outside. You'll most commonly find internal wastegates on OEM style turbochargers. This is because they're cheaper to manufacture, simple and do the job just good enough for stock and lightly modified applications. If you're looking to upgrade your standard actuator, we have a range of direct fit and universal actuators for your OEM turbo. These have a motorsport grade design and give you the flexibility of interchangeable springs and plumbing options. There are a few drawbacks to these though. Because they're located inside the turbine housing, the size of the valve is a big limiting factor. If the valve cannot bypass enough exhaust gas to control the compressor speed, boost creep can enter the chat. It doesn't matter how much you open that flap. If it simply cannot flow enough, more will make its way into the turbine and that will lead to higher than desired boost pressures. Then comes external wastegates. As the name suggests, these are mounted away from the turbo, placed between the exhaust ports of the engine and the merge collector before the turbine inlet. It's important to place these correctly in order to make sure that the gas will have a good flow path to both the turbine and the wastegate. Because they are not limited to the constraints of the turbine housing, they can be larger and therefore higher flowing to be able to control larger turbochargers. So the concept sounds pretty simple. Close the tap, more boost. Open the tap, less boost. But if it's that simple, why are there so many types? When you think about it, everything that's happening in your engine bay all at once, coupled with what your right foot is doing, and then taking into account what type of driving you're doing, it can get pretty tricky to control what you need exactly when you need it. For example, drag racers will usually only need a few PSI at the start line, but then once the car gets rolling, they pump out over 100 PSI by the end of the track. Drifters are on and off the throttle. Boost changes 10 times a second. And then you've got your casual street cruiser that doesn't need that millisecond boost response and hates the idea of filling up CO2 bottles every time they jump in the car. Each use case has its own benefits and that's why we have solutions for all types of engines and turbos and applications. Your typical car running an external wastegate will have one of these in the engine bay. A traditional pneumatic poppet style wastegate. This is one of our 60 mils. The wastegate is positioned with the bottom of the valve towards the exhaust side of the engine. When the exhaust gas gets to this point, it can choose where to go depending on the path of least resistance, turbine or out of the wastegate. The valve is pushed closed by the spring in the cap. These springs are rated to a certain boost pressure they can achieve. It's very important to get the base spring pressure right. That's why we include a range of springs with our wastegates. They can be used individually or in combination. For example, seven PSI spring will be able to make approximately seven PSI of manifold pressure. Using the seven PSI spring as an example, the wastegate will only allow the turbocharger to produce a maximum boost pressure above seven PSI. Anything below that number and the wastegate just stays closed. There's simply not enough pressure to overcome that spring force. Above that seven PSI, however, that valve is going to open and will vary how much it opens to control that seven PSI pressure. Now, there are ways to increase the range of 
a wastegate spring. By manipulating the pressure source into the wastegate cap, you can potentially double the boost pressure at which that gate will start to open. That seven PSI spring is now going to be able to keep that valve shut all the way up to 14 PSI and potentially beyond. How about that CO2 boost control stuff? What you're looking at here is one of our CO2 controlled wastegates. CO2 boost control is generally reserved for high powered drag cars. These are only loaded with a small spring, around five PSI. So when you're launching the car off the line and your traction limited, you're only making the power your tire can take. Then once you get into the top end, CO2 gas is pumped into the cap here, usually from a pressurized bottle. This closes the wastegate so you can feed as much boost into your engine as you want. Now, if the idea of a huge tuning window sounds good, but you're not that keen on storing and refilling a CO2 bottle, then maybe the next wastegate is what you're looking for. Our range of E-gates do away with springs altogether in exchange for full electronic control. Set of motors and gears control the exact position of the valve, giving direct control of your boost. If you want to know more about CO2 boost control or our E-gates, leave us a comment and we can cover it in a future video. That's only an intro into wastegates. There are many more factors that go into designing the ideal boost control system. Hopefully you learned something today. If you have any other topics you'd like us to cover, leave them in the comments below. And as always, keep on building. Thank you.